People probably heard a lot about Project 2025 recently. It's been all over the news. Let me talk about what it is specifically and what one of the, the creators of it effectively said. Project 2025, in a nutshell, is an attempt to take over the government and turn it into a dictatorship. And I'll explain how they plan to do that in a minute. But it was written by the Heritage Foundation, which is like a nonprofit think tank for conservative extremists. And the leader of the Heritage Foundation, like the president or whatever, is on the right here. Dude's name is Kevin Roberts. In this clip, this guy says... They're in the middle of a revolution, the right is, and it will remain bloodless as long as the left allows it to be bloodless. Let's listen. Well, Professor, my great friend, thanks for filling in and doing a great job. Uh, Three things. Number one, in spite of all this nonsense from the left, we are going to win. We're in the process of taking this country back. No one in the audience should be despairing. No one should be discouraged. We ought to be really encouraged by what happened yesterday. And in spite of all of the injustice, which... I think what he's saying about yesterday, he's probably talking about how the president is now considered to be immune from all prosecution over, quote unquote, official acts, basically immunity. The president is completely immune from prosecution effectively, which means Biden could order SEAL Team 6 to go kill Donald Trump and he wouldn't be charged for it. But the Supreme Court justices that made that decision know that Biden's not going to do that. Trump might, but that's okay. They'll adjudicate that when the time comes. Anyway, that's what he's talking about, I think. Encouraged by what happened yesterday, and in spite of all of the injustice, which, of course, friends and audience of this show, of our friend Steve know, we are going to prevail. Number two, to to the point of the clips, and, and of course, your preview of the fact that I am an early American historian and love the Constitution. He doesn't love the Constitution. That that Supreme Court ruling yesterday on immunity is vital, and it's vital for a lot of reasons. But I would go to Federalist number 70 if people in the audience are looking for something to read over Independence Day weekend, in addition to rereading the Declaration of Independence. Read Hamilton's number 70, because there, along with some other essays, in some other essays, he talks about the importance of a vigorous executive. Hamilton wrote a whole bunch of essays and stuff about how the government should be structured because it was brand new. And some argued in favor of a strong federal government, which is what we have. And others argued for basically no federal government. And every state individually makes decisions for themselves. Like they wanted something like what the EU is. There's like an overarching governing body, but no state would have to like adhere to anything. It would just be like guidelines, basically. We obviously got a federal government that dictates what states are allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do, and it takes precedence over everything. Uh, That's what Alexander Hamilton was arguing for successfully. That's what we got. And this guy is misinterpreting that to mean Hamilton wanted a dictatorship. I'm sorry, bro. Like, I don't care what he wanted, even if that were true. I don't want a dictatorship. In some other essays, he talks about the importance of a vigorous executive. You know, former congressman, the importance of Congress doing its job, but we also know the importance of the executive being able to do his job. And can you imagine, Dave Bratt, any president, put politics off to the side, any president having to second guess, triple guess every decision they're making in their official capacity? Oh, they absolutely should. They have lives in their hands. They should absolutely triple guess every decision that they make. They should be real sure about what they're about to do. If they're sending people to war or whatever, they're sending fake electors or or whatever it is to stay in power. Yeah, they should triple guess that. They shouldn't, in my opinion, be charged with a crime for controlling the military, obviously. I mean, we couldn't function as like a government if that happened, but nobody ever suggested that. That's not how the system works. This guy is arguing that that's what it's like right now, apparently, and he wants to make it into a system where the president is completely unaccountable. Unaccountable. 
you couldn't have the republic that you just described. But number three, let me speak about the radical left. You and I have both been parts of faculties and faculty senates and understand that the left has taken over our institutions. Like that's just false, but okay. The reason that they are apoplectic right now, the reason that so many anchors on MSNBC, for example, are losing their minds daily is because our side is winning. And so Mm, no, I I don't know about that, but the right is pushing uh, basically it's like a judicial coup effectively right now. So that's disturbing. Yes. I come full circle on this response and just want to encourage you with some substance that we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. These people are trying to spark another revolution. In fact, they're they're doing the revolution is what he's saying. Leader of the Heritage Foundation. So Donald Trump came out recently and said, I know nothing about Project 2025. I have no idea who's behind it. I disagree with some of the things they're saying, and some of the things they're saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. Anything they do, I wish them luck, but I have nothing to do with them. It's just completely fabricated. He's pretending he doesn't know anything about the people or who, who's behind it or whatever. That's nonsense, and I'll prove it to you. But before I do, let me just talk about it in a little bit more detail about what this is, okay? This is from the Heritage Foundation YouTube channel, their podcast or whatever. And they had a guy on who helped write the thing, explain what it is. Okay, so let's just listen to this. I'm actually going to speed it up to like 1.5. But give us a little bit more background on the administrative state. What are we talking about when we talk about that? Sure. Well, our constitution lays out three branches of government. What we've had emerge over the last hundred years or even more than that is the fourth branch of government that we weren't supposed to have. That's called the administrative state, the deep state. Okay, the branches of government exist to prevent the others from getting out of control. Like Congress acts as a check on the president and the judicial branch acts as a check on Congress. And, you know, that's how it works. That's why those branches exist. There isn't a fourth branch. He's talking about the FBI, the CIA and, and whatever else. There could be an argument that maybe those organizations are too powerful and have less oversight than they should, but that's not a fourth branch. It's under the executive branch. It's still one, it's still three branches. State, the deep state, the permanent bureaucracy. It's the part of the government that doesn't change. And it's very large. There are 2.2 million full-time non-military federal employees. At any given point, there are between 16 million and 20 million federal contractors. Wow. If you are a senator or a member of Congress, do you have... So he's just talking about like the federal government, just like anybody, not even like a fourth branch. If you are a senator or a member of Congress, do you have maybe a dozen people, 15 people on your staff? If you're a U.S. senator, maybe 30 or 40 people on your staff, the Congressional Research Service, there are several thousand people who work for the legislative branch. If you're on the Supreme Court, you have four clerks per term. If you're a lower judge, you got a few clerks. So... Yeah, so the people that he's describing right now, here's the plan for Project 2025. Everybody from the ground up is appointed by the president. Now, there are people who have been in these positions for like decades who are experts, like Fauci, for example. He has been in that position overseeing pandemics and stuff since I think like the AIDS crisis in the 70s or the 80s or whenever it was, I think the 80s. All the way through, he worked for George H.W. Bush. He worked for Reagan, so it was in the 80s. That's when AIDS really started to gain a foothold. He worked for Reagan, H.W. Bush, Clinton, W. Bush, Obama, and then finally Donald Trump and Biden for a short time, but then he quit, I believe. Because he's nonpartisan. He's not taking a position on anything. He's just doing what he's supposed to do, handle pandemics. That simple. At no point has he ever made a political statement that that I'm aware of. He's at best said, I don't like Trump. So this guy or the Heritage Foundation generally wants to replace all federal employees with hyper partisan extremists. And they even built a database of possible of, of applicants of like possible people who could fill those roles. Now, what they're not mentioning is that once you fill those roles, you're taking experts out of the equation. Okay, Fauci was an expert in the field, for better or worse, and should not be replaced with some right-wing extremist anti-vax person or something. And the, the Heritage Foundation's ignoring the fact that once they're in there, it's not easy to get somebody out of there because they know the job and they've done it for so long. 
Anyway, that's the the plan. Keep listening here. The executive branch, 2.2 million. So it's clear that within the executive branch, it's a lot bigger. And you got a, a whole fourth branch there, the administrative state. Uh, so you're talking about people who are working for the Department of Justice, the FBI, the CIA. You're also talking about Department of Agriculture and Education. And when we talk about all these agencies, those are all part of the administrative state. That's not the deep state, quote unquote. That's just like people who work for the government, but whatever. Yes. And they don't change with when a new president comes in. They're not responsive to elections. And so you could have somebody who is in a role who works at an agency, maybe like the Department of Health and Human Services, works there for 30 years, 40 years, makes a career out of it. That's a fine thing. But the political control of the administrative state needs to be the political appointees who work for the president. Do they want to replace all of the people in the government with political appointees? That's the point. And up to now... We have judges that like operate in the system who do what's best for democracy, who are just like going to work, doing their job, ruling on this issue, and then going home. And it's not politicized. These people want to replace non-political jobs with political jobs because you never know which one is going to be useful to them to accomplish their goals. And it's concentrating power in the executive branch. The president has way more power than he, he does right now, and that, that he should have. A president should not have this amount of power unchecked, unchecked power. Yeah, listen to him explain his position on appointing um, all of these people. There are two basic schools of thought. One is the view of Woodrow Wilson, who is called the father of public administration. This is the view that we have now. This is the view that's been built up over over the time since his presidency, basically. And the view is basically that the whole government needs to be run by nonpartisan technical experts. And that Absolutely. Yes, I love it. The only thing that matters is experience. The only thing that matters is expertise. Uh, how many degrees you have to work for the government. That's the most important thing. And yes, yes. The political aspect of it is just superfluous. Um, the other point of view is our point of view. This view is associated with, uh, you know, with President Trump, President Reagan, actually President Jimmy Carter a, a little bit as well. But bullshit. Jimmy Carter believed what the Heritage Foundation believes here. No, I'm sorry. I can't I can't buy that. President Jimmy Carter a, a little bit as well. But the, this is the view uh, in favor of political management of the bureaucracy. Our view is that the management of the bureaucracy is a task that is inherently political. You can't take the politics out of politics. And we need to have robust political control of that vast federal bureaucracy. OK, now here's where it really starts getting wild. You can't take politics out of politics. Sure. Except pandemic readiness is not politics. It's just being ready for a pandemic. So he's just like twisting everything around there. But OK. And the folks who are in policy making positions should be reportable to the president. So in other words, your vote should also count towards what's going on within the administrative state. That's a very good, very good way to put it. I think the administrative state should be experts, plain and simple. Listen to this next piece here. So you've talked about some of the objections that people have raised. There's been a, a certain amount of furor in the media. One of those is that you are taking independent, the word being used, independent experts in the bureaucracy, and you are submitting them to federal control, and you're creating a quasi-dictatorship around the president. Yes, absolutely. He's creating, he's concentrating power. Around the president. Can you respond to that point? And then are there any others that have been floating out there that would be good to talk about? Sure. Well, the ironic thing is that we're the people who want a less powerful federal government. We want the. I mean, you can say that all you want, but what they're saying and doing tells me otherwise. They do not want a smaller federal government. Powerful federal government. We want the federal government to be reduced in its size and scope. We actually call for the closure of certain agencies. Really? Wow. Is that so? You want a smaller federal government? So is that why Project Twenty Twenty Five has a section on banning Quack. under the proposals? Quack would be banned and tech and telecom companies that facilitate access to such content would be shut down. The document calls for school choice and parental control over schools, takes aim at what it calls woke propaganda. It proposes to eliminate a long list of terms from all laws and federal regulations, including sexual orientation, diversity, equity and inclusion, gender equality. Huh. Doesn't sound like a small government to me. Weird. I thought he's in favor of small government. That's not a small government. That's a concentrated government with no checks or balances in it. That's really the problem here. The, the guy wants to set up a system where the president can do anything with no accountability at all because he knows people on the left aren't going to abuse that. The only people who are going to abuse it are people who are in favor of, of like dictatorship.
in our policy book mandate for leadership, we want to close down entire departments. We are the people who believe in decentralized power. We want to turn over more power to the states, localities, local communities, tribal governments when it comes to health care and education and welfare, protecting our environment. We we want to move some of those functions out of Washington, D.C. So so that's the first thing, you know, we want. Yeah. No, he wants to ban a whole bunch of stuff, actually, is what he's doing. And, you know, the outcome of removing regulations about like keeping rat poison by the machine that like pumps out snickers bars or whatever you know the outcome of that people get rat poison in their snickers every single regulation that exists in the government was paid for in blood it's there because somebody died from it or got very sick or some other thing you don't want plutonium stored next to the break room that regulation exists specifically because somebody did it and someone else got sick from it. So he wants to remove those regulations. What is wrong with him? Seriously, he wants a dictatorship. The federal government to exert less influence in the everyday American's life. We want to reduce Washington's size and scope, reduce the footprint of Washington, make America bigger and Washington smaller. So we're the people who want less government. You can say that. It's just false. So that's the general like rundown of what Project 2025 is. So what about Donald Trump? Does he know what it is? That's the uh, million dollar question now. Boy, would it be embarrassing if we found an example of Donald Trump talking about the Heritage Foundation or the leader of it or whatever, right? Oops. Yeah, we've got one here. Uh, February 28th, 2018. The Heritage Foundation has just stated that 64% of the Trump agenda is already done. Faster than even Ronald Reagan. We're blown away, said Thomas Binion of Heritage. President Trump is very active, very conservative, and very effective. Huge volume and spectrum of issues. All right, maybe he got praise from one guy, right? Maybe he just knows this one thing. He saw an article on it or something. That could be, right? Boy, would it be embarrassing if he knew the guy that actually wrote the document, right? John McKenty was in his administration and also wrote the Project 2025 document. And another firing, President Trump's longtime personal aide, John McEntee, is out of his job. A source says McEntee was fired because he is under investigation for serious issues related to gambling and taxes. McEntee has been hired as a senior advisor to the Trump 2020 re-election campaign. Uh-oh. This guy wrote the document or assisted in writing the document. And he was in the Trump administration in 2016, and he was rehired by the 2020 campaign. Oops. Yeah. If you want to claim you don't know the people who did it, maybe don't hire them to work on your 2020 campaign. Boy, would it be embarrassing if the Heritage Foundation and the leader, Kevin Roberts, gave Trump all the credit for coming up with Project 2025 or assisting in the ideas or, or the direction of it or whatever. Right. That would be super embarrassing. We've been working with all of them on one project since soon after Joe Biden took the oath of office before any conservative presidential candidates had even entered the race. As my friend and colleague Paul Dans before talked about briefly, our project 2025 has developed a comprehensive policy agenda, but even more importantly, recruiting people, 20,000 people. Yeah, that database I was talking about earlier. To go into the next administration, hopefully to help take back this country for you and for your audiences. We want no credit. We want the American people, if President Trump is, is elected again, President Trump and his administration to take credit for that. But it will also be a great sign if all of this is successful, that in fact, as we know in our prayer time, but maybe not every time when we're watching the news, that the Lord is still smiling upon America. Boy, would it be embarrassing if we had video of Donald Trump shaking this guy's hand, wouldn't it? Boy, would it be embarrassing if we had Donald Trump specifically acknowledging this guy's presence in the room and thanking him for stuff. Heritage Foundation president, somebody else doing an unbelievable job. He's bringing it back to levels it's never seen. Dr. Kevin Roberts. Kevin, thank you. Kevin. Oopsie day. Just picked a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies on that one, didn't they? <laughs> Just want to step back for a second. That McEntee guy or McKinty or whatever his name is. I don't know if you remember him. I covered him a while back. I covered this specific clip I'm about to watch, but he's sitting in a car. This should give you an idea of who he is, his personality, his interests, his goals in life. He's sitting in a car 
And he says this on TikTok. So I always keep this fake Hollywood money in my car. So when a homeless person asks for money, then I give them like a fake $5 bill. So I feel good about myself. They feel good. And then when they go to use it, they get arrested. So I'm actually like helping clean up the community, you know, getting them off the street. Colossal scumbag. I don't know how he justifies all this stuff to himself. This is who wrote Project 2025, the, the document, the 900 page manifesto or one of the people. Again, it comes in like a bunch of different um, chapters and pillars and things. And it was written by multiple people. But it's an initiative run by Kevin Roberts of the Heritage Foundation, partially written by this guy. These people are so integrated in Donald Trump's like administration and campaigns and everything. They've picked people to be in his administration. He knows exactly who these people are. So again, tell me, Donald Trump, that you don't know what Project 2025 is or who runs it. I know nothing about Project 2025. I have no idea who's behind it. I disagree with some of the things they're saying, and some of the things they're saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. No, Donald Trump stands for all of that stuff. He can deny it till he's blue in the face, but what I see from his campaign and what he is doing perfectly mirrors the goals and interests of Project 2025. Again, it was a 900 page book. There was a whole bunch of stuff in there about practically every subject, but the really disturbing part is replacing every federal employee, basically, with Trump appointees. That is not good. Anyway, tell me what you think about it in the comments. I was talking with somebody on Reddit about Project 2025, and they said that it's not, you know, um, it has nothing to do with anybody. It's not important. Nobody knows what it is, and nobody cares about it. So I gave the guy, like, multiple examples of senators and other congressmen passing bills with verbiage straight out of Project 2025. And he said, so those aren't important people. Uh, Donald Trump didn't say anything about it or whatever the hell. And, I, you know, gave him a billion examples of like, you know, like I did tonight, Trump talking about it and everything or talking about the things in it. And then he started repeating Nazi propaganda. And I just checked out after that. 